Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to World News Midnight News Edition, brought to you by All24 News. These are the headlines. Algiers' declaration of reconciliation for the Palestinian factions is an initiative that was internationally hailed and widely welcomed. Captain Ibrahim Traoré was designated unanimously transitional president until a presidential election is scheduled for July 2024. Forty people are now thought to have died following an explosion in a coal mine in northern Turkey and Amsara on the Black Sea coast. Authorities stated that 58 miners had been rescued, 11 had been injured and one was unaccounted for. And also coming up in our news, the International Pumpet Festival is held in the Indonesian city of Yogyakarta the Artistic and Cultural Center of Java. Hello again. First in our news, Minister of Foreign Affairs and the National Community Abroad, Mr. Umtala Mamra, received on Saturday his counterpart, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Jordanian Expatriate Affairs, Ayman Safadi. The two sides discussed ways to strengthen bilateral relations between the two countries in various fields of endeavor and regional as well as international developments of common interest. Also, the ongoing preparations for the holding of the next Arab summit in Algeria. <laughs> This visit came at an appropriate time for us to advance bilateral relations between the two countries in the post-COVID era, and there are a number of existing agreements that must be activated and implemented. We're so close to the Arab summit in Algeria. My brother and my colleague is interested in consulting with Algeria and the contribution of the brothers in Jordan to the success of this summit. During this visit, we talked about the necessity to build on the distinguished historical relations that bind our two brotherly countries. There are two parts to the brotherly dialogue that we conducted today. The first is related to the bilateral relations that we are keen to develop with Algeria to serve the interests of the two brotherly countries and people. We also talked about the practical planning of holding the Joint Committee to search for prospects for economic, commercial, investment, tourism and educational cooperation. Still in Algeria and within the current economic and international tensions, Algeria continues the steps of economic recovery while maintaining financial balances and encouraging investment. The preliminary draft of the general budget law for the year 2023 in Algeria included supporting purchasing power and encouraging investment and it is expected that oil tax revenues would increase the country's foreign exchange reserves. Algiers Declaration of Reconciliation for the Palestinian Factions is an initiative that was internationally hailed and widely welcomed. The details in this report. Algiers Declaration, a document that unites once more Palestinian factions around the same table for the future of the Palestinian cause, which is reborn from its ashes. The world bows for the Algerian performance carried by a masterful hand of the Algerian president, Abdelmajid Taboun. Positive reactions kept on coming, the latest one being that of the Secretary General of the Arab League, who held the end of the division within the Palestinian political class. In fact, all countries have their eyes turned towards Algiers, which does not intend to fall asleep on its duty. The ultimate dream cherished by Algeria is to see the Palestinian state proclaimed with a loud and clear voice, according to the 1967 borders. Qatar, Turkey, Russia, China, Libya, Mauritania, Ireland and even the European Union 
the Declaration of Algiers was unanimously approved under the aegis of the Algerian diplomacy because it paves the way for the Palestinian unity, the sole guarantor of the inevitable triumph of the Palestinian cause. And in the occupied territories in Ramallah, the occupation forces arrested five Palestinian civilians, including two brothers in the occupied West Bank, according to Palestinian local sources. According to the same source, the occupying Israeli armed forces have captured two Palestinian brothers and three other citizens after beating them and searching their homes and their parents. To the other just cause, Western Sahara Film Festival is another occasion for the internalization or internationalization of the cause of the Sahrawi people and the right to self-determination. Participants express the objective of their participation being here, the support for the Sahrawi people. The objective of being here is the support for the Sahrawi people and the opposition which an important part of the society of Mallorca and Spain share. We think it's historical error and we think that the Spanish parliament, which is against this decision and which has a majority to stop this error from continuing. Still with the same fire, Algeria's permanent representative blows up the propaganda and the lies of the Moroccan regime. Morocco's attempt to propose autonomy as the only solution will set a dangerous precedent that threatens the basis of international legitimacy and the charter of the United Nations and will legitimize the occupation and forcibly annexation of the people of Western Sahara. As for the suggested solution of autonomy, as the only solution, it represents a dangerous precedent for international legitimacy and for the Charter of the United Nations. Granting any credibility to this proposition will mean for the first time since the existence of the United Nations, the legitimization of the colonial fact and the stubbornness to impose an accomplished fact in addition to the withdrawal of the formal and administrative power from its historic responsibility can only be considered as complicity with the occupying Force. Moroccan Spanish relations are deteriorating after Rabat issued a letter to the UN Human Rights Council through which it denied the existence of a land border between Morocco and Spain as a response to the crime of using excessive violence leading to the killing of African migrants in the massacre of Melilla last month. The Moroccan letter considered that Ceuta and Melilla are occupied by Spain. On the other hand, President Sanchez, who supported Morocco's occupation of Western Sahara, described Rabat's position as wrong, stressing that Ceuta and Melilla are Spanish. Abdullah Bathali have been designated as the new UN envoy to Libya. Nine months after the resignation of his predecessor, the UN envoy designate by the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres begins his movement in the region by visiting the Tunisian Foreign Minister. Bathele has expressed his willingness to achieve a final solution for Libya, which is living a severe insecurity. Captain Ibrahim Traoré was designated on Friday, October 14th, unanimously transitional president until a presidential election is scheduled for July 2024 in this country, plagued by violence. Captain Traoré was appointed by national meetings, bringing together some 300 representatives of the army and the police, customary and religious organizations, civil society, trade unions, as well as parties. I am totally satisfied with the meeting I had with the captain. We leave with confidence. We will brief the sitting president of ECOWAS and all the heads of state on our mission. But I can assure you now that ECOWAS will remain with the people of Burkina Faso and will continue to assist the people of Burkina Faso in this difficult challenge they face. The leader of the Sandrist bloc, Muqtada Sadr, confirmed his refusal to join the new government headed by Mohammed Shia Sudan. Saturday's announcement came two days after the election of Abdul Latif Rashid as Iraq's new president and as Sudani as Prime Minister in an effort to resolve a year of political impasse following the elections in October 2021. 
And in different topical news, 40 people are now thought to have died following an explosion in a coal mine in northern Turkey in Amasra on the Black Sea coast. Authorities stated that 58 miners had been rescued, 11 had been injured, and one was unaccounted for. Around 110 people were in the mine at the time of Friday's blast, almost half of them at more than 300 meters deep. Emergency crews had worked through the night, digging through rock to try to reach survivors. <laughs> The reasons of this explosion and the people responsible for it, if any, will be revealed with the administrative and judicial investigation. These investigations have already been initiated in a multifaceted manner. Our priority was to reach the workers trapped underground. We have finally taken out the 41st miner. To Energy File Now, OPEC Secretary General Haytham al Reis pays a welcome visit to Algiers from October 15th to October 17th at the invitation of the Algerian Minister of Energy and Mines, Mr. Mohamed Al Qab. On the meeting's agenda is the situation of the international oil market and its short and medium term outlooks. Moving on to a different energy. Topic, but here in France, the CGT voted Saturday for the continuation of the strike in the refineries of Total Energies. The trade union organizations, which withdraw from negotiations following the signing of Total Energies of a majority agreement on wages with the CFDT and the CFE CGC, announced on Friday that it wanted to extend the strike. Islam said reports. Amid the French fuel crisis that put the country into a turmoil, the CGT union has decided to carry on the long strike following Sunday's vote. The act came after an agreement confirmed by French oil major Total Energies and other unions, including CDFT and CFECGC. They agreed on a 7% pay rise and a bonus payment of between 3,000 euros and 6,000 euros. However, the CGT had already said it wanted a 10% wage rise, citing inflation in the company's windfall profits from the global energy crisis. The strike movement is renewed on the establishment of dons until the next Wednesday. We call for generalization of the strike movement from Tuesday in this country. Today, the connivance between the signatory trade union organizations totals general management and the government, and I'm talking here about the CFDT and Laurent Berger, is obvious. Nearly a third of gas stations still have supply issues, despite the government demanding refinery workers to get gasoline flowing again. According to data from the Energy Minister on Saturday, only 27.3 percent of gas stations are experiencing supply issues, comparing to 30.85 percent where requisitioning first began. At this stage, we have made essential requisitions to allow us to supply gas stations. We do not wish to meddle in social negotiations. The right to strike is a constitutional right and social negotiations should be prioritized. What we have done are targeted requisitions to bring relief to the situation for the French people. The CGT wants to use the refinery workers' demonstrators as a springboard to start a nationwide industrial action. Some of EDF's nuclear reactors are already experiencing strikes, while other union branches from the railway and automobile industries stated they would join a larger strike scheduled for next Tuesday. At a time when the world is expecting the Russian forces to continue their strikes on the Ukrainian cities, Russian President Vladimir Putin stated that his forces are in no need of more massive strikes and mobilization, while the Defense Ministry spokesman stated that Ukrainian forces have achieved more advancement in Kherson region. Osama Ayadi reports. Days after the massive strike of Russian forces on different key cities in Ukraine, and hours after the missiles that rocked Zaporizhia, President Putin stated that there were no plans for a further military mobilization in Russia. Putin clarified that the partial mobilization he announced last month, which the Russian Defense Ministry said aimed to recruit 300,000 soldiers, reached its end and would be over within two weeks. First of all, in the beginning, the Ministry of Defense supposed to draft a lower number of recruits, not 300,000 firstly, 
Secondly, nothing additional is planned. There was no suggestion on the part of the Defense Ministry on this, and I see no need for this in the near future. I think within two weeks all the mobilization activities will be over. Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Igor Konashenkov affirmed that the Russian military foiled Ukrainian attempts to advance in the Kyrgyzstan region and destroyed five crossings on the Unholitz River, a tributary of the Dnieper. According to the same source, Russian troops blocked Ukrainian attempts to make inroads into Russian defenses near Lyamnin, the eastern Luhansk region. In the direction of Mykolaiv and Krivyre, the enemy made unsuccessful offensive attempts near the settlements of Tuchani, Saduk, Ichenka of the Kherson region, as a result of the active actions of Russian troops. All attacks were repelled. Russia's defense ministry also underlined that it had hit all designated targets in a massive missile attack on Ukrainian military, communication and energy infrastructure. For Russian forces, the goals of the missile strikes had been achieved in one of the largest coordinated Russian attacks against Ukraine since the first weeks of what Moscow casts as a special military operation. The armed forces of Russian Federation continue their special military operation. Today, Russia's armed forces carried out a massive strike with long-range precision weapons on Ukraine's military command sites, communications and energy infrastructure. The goal of the strike was achieved. All designated objects have been hit. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky commented on these last statements of the Russian leaders and stated that Russia is living in an atmosphere of hopelessness, describing the Kremlin's actions as blackmailing of the world. To UK now, Britain's Income and Finance Minister Jeremy Hunt said on Sunday some taxes would go up. A further U-turn as Liz Truss battles to hold on as Prime Minister just over a month into her term. Zara Jenny has the story. Britain's new finance minister, Jeremy Hunt, said some taxes would go up and tough spending decisions were needed, signaling further reversals from Prime Minister Liz Truss as she battles to keep her job just over a month into her term. It was a mistake to cut the top rate of tax at a period when we were asking everyone to make sacrifices. And it was a mistake to fly blind uh, and not to back up the economic plans that were announced with an independent forecast from the Office for Budget Responsibility. Both those things have been addressed. Speaking at an event in the northern town of Barnsley, British opposition Labour leader Keir Starmer said Truss was clinging on to power after the government U-turn on fiscal plans and her sacking of quasi quartank as finance minister. And there's still one person clinging on, the prime minister. No doubt we'll hear plenty of laughable excuses in the coming days. After 12 years of stagnation, that's all her party has left. But even they know she can't fix the mess that she's created. UK press savaged Truss as the country's newspapers openly questioned how long she would last in power. According to media, senior Conservative MPs are now plotting how to remove Truss from office, with some considering whether to publicly call for her to resign in the coming days. But the question remains, if Liz Truss is indeed ousted like her predecessor, who is a suitable candidate to succeed her as the next British Prime Minister? Who voted for this? People gathered in Berlin to protest increasing food and energy prices in Germany on Saturday. The demonstrators stressed that those facing poverty due to inflation need help, demanding equal opportunities for all, affordable housing, support those with low wages and increase social assistance. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro campaigned on Friday in Duque de Caxias, a neighborhood outside Rio de Janeiro, in an effort to gain more support in the state for the presidential election. Sofian Kenturi with more. In an effort to increase support in the state, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro campaigned on Friday in Duque de Caxias, a neighboring outside of Rio de Janeiro. On stage, Bolsonaro was joined by re-election candidates Claudio Castro, the governor of Rio de Janeiro and the city mayor Washington race. In the same event, Bolsonaro criticized the social program of the late president Luis Inácio Lula da Silva. Today we support the poor with a true social project, not those aims like Bolsa Familia. Today those indeed are given at least 600 reals. And do you know why we can pay that? Because in my government there is no corruption. 
porque nós conseguimos pagar isso? Bolsonaro, the current president, received 4.8 million votes in the state of Rio de Janeiro, 1 million more than Lula, who came in the second place with 3.8 million. Bolsonaro is our captain, family, homeland, liberty. We are Brazilians. No more corruption in this country. Enough. Our flag will never be red. However, in the same state during 2018 elections, Bolsonaro suffered from 300,000 vote loss. With more than 48% of national vote in the first round, the leftist Workers' Party candidate nearly won outright. Bolsonaro received 43% of the vote. Last statistics show that Bolsonaro has gained support of many states, which can allow him to win the presidential election against his rival, Luis Inácio Lula da Silva. In portions of three states in southeast Australia, hundreds of people have been rescued from floodwaters while emergency warnings are still in effect, the majority of which are in Victoria, with Rochester currently among the places that have been most severely affected by the flooding. We of course send our deepest sympathies to his family and friends. Rochester is a proud local community, a very tight local community. Uh, and uh, they'll all be, uh, I know, uh, uh, saddened to hear of one of their number passing away. I just make the point, we'll stand with that family and all families affected by this, uh, but it just brings home for all of us that this is serious, this is potentially very, very dangerous. To the United States now, a 15-year-old shooter killed five people, including a policeman who was not on duty on Friday in Raleigh in North Carolina. Several people were also injured, including the suspect who is in critical condition. Another shooting occurred in Connecticut after an ambush set by a 35-year-old male who attacked police patrol, killing two officers and injuring one. According to the state medical examiner's office, the shooter died inflicted by gunshot wound to the neck with spinal cord injuries. And for more international news, let's follow this report. Colombian authorities announced on Friday the arrest of 19 people allegedly linked to the Venezuelan gang Tren de Aragua, including a police lieutenant. The authorities have also seized several bags of drugs, two guns and ammunition. Chinese President Xi Jinping is due to deliver a report at the Chinese Communist Party Congress which begins on Sunday that will set economic, trade and technology goals for at least the next five years. China senior leaders for now want to continue with the existing COVID stance, um, but probably there will, you know, we will, we will get some indication as to how they want to continue to refine the government's um, response to COVID, probably you know, uh, trying to uh, to call on local governments to, you know, indeed make their response more targeted, less harmful to to the economy. Um, we may also hear further news, further announcements, like you know, strategies on how to deal with the property downturn. Perhaps we will get some more indications as to how they want to, you know. Um, help property developers, how they want to instill more confidence in the housing sector. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban warned of serious dangers at the country's border during a speech at the swearing-in ceremony of new army volunteers and the handover of the first German-built Lynx combat vehicle on Saturday. We have a good reason to find the serious dangers at our country's borders. We must get through and emerge victorious from the difficult years ahead of us. There is a huge danger. In the east, the guns thunder and the war rages, and in the west, uncountable amount of weapons flow to the front. And if that was not enough, Europe is besieged by tens and hundreds of thousands of illegal migrants on our southern borders. Armed groups of them are roaming the countryside. It's time to awaken the spirit of the military. Mexican director Guillermo del Toro presents his new film. Pinocchio at the London Film Festival, alongside some of the actors who lent their voices to the characters. The stop motions animated the film was a long time project of the director, who wanted to make a version of the story that celebrates disobedience.
And finally in our news, the International Puppet Festival is held in the Indonesian city of Yogyakarta, the artistic and cultural center of Java. The event brings together puppeteer artists from around the world this week. Apart from local shows, performances at this six-day festival include bands from Thailand and Japan, European puppeteers from Germany and the Netherlands, as well as live performance from Afghanistan. Nowadays, more and more groups of young people are doing puppet shows, and this puppet festival has successfully brought together puppet groups from Indonesia and other places. Many viewers are inspired and create new groups after attending the festival, just as we did initially. It's another way of telling stories. And even nowadays, you know, with social media and uh, on everything on the computer, the younger generation is more used to a graphic thing, you know, to watch stuff in, instead of listening and reading. So I really think there is a future. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, our news comes to a close. Thank you for tuning in to our channel. For more stories, don't forget to follow our social media platforms as well as our website. That's it for now. Bye-bye.